Hi folks, here's a neat thing you can do with a dissectable capacitor, or dissectable Leiden jar in this case. Leiden jar is just what the first discovered capacitor was called. First, to prove it works as a normal capacitor, I charge it up here with a Wimshurst machine. I disconnect it from the Wimshurst machine, and then I discharge it. From the spark, you can see that the capacitor was in fact charged. Now to show you the neat thing, I charge it up again, but this time I remove the inside plate. And then I remove the outside plate. I touch them together. Notice that there's no spark, nothing, which seems weird. You'd expect that the plates would have been charged. I pick up the original container and when I put my hand inside, I do feel some prickly sensation on my skin and my hairs react. Next, I put the capacitor back together. What do you expect to happen when I discharge it? A spark happens. How does it work? Let's look at a cutaway view of the capacitor. Each plate has charge on it in the area between the two plates. One plate is negatively charged and the other is positively charged. We can also draw a line between each pair of charges, representing the electric field. The closer the lines are together, the stronger the electric field. As we pull the inside plate out, the area between the two plates decreases. The negative charge on one plate moves to stay close to the positive charge on the other plate, and vice versa. That means the charge on each plate is more tightly packed together, and so the electric field lines are closer together. The electric field is stronger. And as we pull the plate out more, the area is even smaller. The charges on each plate are even closer together, and so the electric field is even stronger yet. The electric field gets strong enough to begin ionizing the air in between the two plates and the container. That's done by pulling negative charge off the negative plate. It's also done by pulling negative charge from the neutral atoms on the container, leaving positive charge behind. The container is made of an insulating material. It doesn't conduct electricity, so the charge can't get from one plate all the way to the other. Instead, it ends up on the container. This side of the container becomes negatively charged, and this side positively charged. Having lost a lot of the negative charge on this plate, it's no longer very negatively charged. And having gained negative charge on this plate, it's no longer very positively charged. So the act of pulling the first plate out of the container has caused most of the charge from the plates to be deposited on the container. And that's why you can remove the plates, touch them together, and put them back and still get a spark. There is another phenomenon called dielectric absorption. It means that the molecules in the dielectric will be rearranged as dipoles, and so a sort of charging happens in the dielectric. But that takes a longer charging time, and charges up the dielectric much less than we see here. Well, thanks for watching. See my YouTube channel, Rimstar.org, for more informative videos like this. That includes one on how to make low voltage capacitors, which includes a good introduction to capacitors. Another on how to make high voltage capacitors, and one on how to make a Wimshurst machine from scratch, using CDs. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos. Or give a thumbs up, or leave a question or comment below. See you soon!